3D printers come in many shapes and sizes. You can spend as little as $150 and as much as a couple thousand on a higher end 3D printer. For any of you that have looked into getting a first 3D printer, especially a do-it-yourself kit style, there's a good chance you've stumbled across some low-cost China kits. I am Daniel from ModBot, and in today's video we're going to be talking about these Chinese kits and whether or not they're even worth it. The most enticing thing about these Chinese kits is quite obviously the price tag. Printers like the Inet A8 are available on sale for around $150 and it's pretty difficult to not turn your head in attention. Over the past half a year or so, I've seen a pretty big rise in these no-name clone Chinese kits flooding in. I constantly am seeing posts about them in the 3D printing news subreddit from new members or people interested in 3D printing. The responses are nearly always one of two things. It's either someone owning the machine, saying that they're not bad with some upgrades, or someone saying that the machine will explode and burn down your house. A little extreme, I know, but it's really not too far-fetched from some of the responses I've been seeing. There is a ton of hate towards these kits for whatever reasoning, and a lot of the accusations are very extreme and exaggerated. I have had personal experience with a few of these cheaper Chinese kits and would like to shed some light. For starters, Chinese kit 3D printers are not bad, plain and simple. Printers like the Annette A8 are not bad printers at all and really are steel at the price range they come in. Now, it would be foolish to think that the components in a $150 printer are the same as a $1000 printer, it's just not the case. Typically, the Chinese machines do use cheaper quality components, as well as lack of very good QC on the parts, which is where the dangers can come into play. However, it is not difficult to swap out the cheap electronics and power supply, as well as put in some fail safes to ensure safety while staying way below the cost of the other more expensive printers. The beautiful thing about these Chinese kits as well is that many of them have a huge community of people like you or me that are dedicated to making these things better and safer. If you can have a cheap $150 machine and dump another 50 into it as well as print some upgrades to get a machine that can print and hang with the best of them once calibrated, why would you not want that? Sure, they are not for everyone. It is nice to have a pretty big 3D printer that looks nice, works out of the box, and has a ton of features. But to a lot of people, we don't care or need all those bells and whistles. These Chinese kits are more than capable of performing nearly as good as some of these expensive printers and they just need some TLC on the user end to get them going. All this aside, I strongly think that you do need some electronic knowledge and a knack for tinkering or you will have a pretty terrible time with these Chinese kits. However, with enough patience and prior research, it is possible for just about everyone to get them going. I have been pretty frustrated with all the hate these machines have been getting when they really are not half bad. Granted, I have a few printers that just work, and I bought them working, ready to go, and I love them for that. But I still have a very special appreciation for my China kits that took a little extra to get going, but are now my machines that I can easily troubleshoot and upgrade as needed. To those of you that have actually owned or do own a China kit, what has your experience been like? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe for more great videos. Once again, this has been Dana from ModBot. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I am looking forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.